Welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk the Valley, and I know Ooh. you're very excited about it, just as we are. Yeah. Before we do, we have to warn you, please, hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have stupid opinions, and we ain't going to apologize anytime soon either. No. So... If you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. But if you're down to party, welcome to this one. And if you are ready to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at. And we're going to start reacting to MILF Men or Two on there. Oh, my God. Oh, I think God. we're also going to react to couples therapy because Dr. Yes. Orna is coming back to Showtime slash Paramount. Plus, I can't. Oh my God, we're going to do that on Patreon, though. Now, yes. if you are watching on YouTube, first of all, thank you. Thank you You're a real one. Mm. Please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every little thing you do helps us to grow the dumpster. Yeah. Thank you in advance. Thank you. You know, one thing I noticed what? right off the top? Huh? Is that my motherfucking birthday? It is your birthday. And you haven't said nothing. Like, we taped a whole show, a whole Vanderpump Rules show. Listen. And did I get a happy birthday, Mama? Mama, you're so valuable to me. I am <laughs> so grateful for the day that you were born, put on this planet, so as to facilitate my joyous existence, Mama. I didn't hear that from you. Listen. Isn't that weird? I'm not performative like, um... Tom the Sandoval? <laughs> bitches on Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. I said happy birthday to you multiple times today, and I got you birthday gifts. You did, but it doesn't matter if you don't let them know that it's my birthday. Okay, I'm well, happy finally fucking birthday. able to drink. <laughs> yeah, you're old enough. It is a celebration indeed. I'm so happy that you've finally reached this milestone in life. Thank you. Oh my Anyways, God. it's my birthday. I feel really bad about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. No, you don't. But I'm old as fuck. No, you're not. Yes, I can't 35. even. 35. I cannot even count that high. <laughs> I cannot even believe I'm this old. 35. Like, no, when I sit down <laughs> and I think, wow. Like, as a youngster, yeah, <laughs> as a young as a youngin, I never thought I'd get to this age. My I just God. never even conceived of a world, of a planet, of a dimension where <laughs> I'd be walking around with a red fucking wig on <laughs> at this age on the internet. Yeah. It's crazy. With how your old gay I am. daughter in law. Yeah. Oh, my love. Oh, uh, love you oh. so much, even though you didn't tell me happy birthday now. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into this horse shit in the valley. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. We're on season one, episode eight, entitled The Invite Fight. Oh, God. Oh, my God. We're in high school, honey. I know. Third grade. Speaking of youngsters. <laughs> oh, so stupid. But we begin with Jackson and Brittany. It's the day after their horrible date. <laughs> and then, then no, it, was, so bad. it was really bad. Do you think they got it on? No. I think she dropped it low and spread no. it wide. Oh, 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 oh. If they did, it lasted five whole minutes and Jax was hating his life. Oh, gosh. During yeah. the whole entire time. He did not want to be there at all. But apparently... He went back into the hotel room mm -hmm. and he said, I'm sorry, my delivery is terrible. I'm learning. Okay. And I'm like, Brittany was the problem. Yeah. I thought you were ve very well reasoned last yep. week when you were trying to tell Brittany how stressed out you are, how life is bringing you low, bringing you down. And she wasn't listening at all. All she wants is another baby. Yeah. But you feel like you have to apologize to her to make it nice. But it's the next day. It is the next she's day. She's not really having a great day. Not really. And she goes and tells Jax to go take a shower with their kid, Cruz. And then she FaceTimes her mama and talks about the bar. And I guess her mom was not keen on him opening a bar at all. And mm -hmm. then we have a flashback of something. I don't know how long ago this was. Right. But a flashback of the mama talking to Jax and saying, mm, I don't think it's a good idea for your marriage. Right. And I think she references Jax telling her that he would never open a bar because people who open bars like lose their marriages. So yeah. And now he's opening a bar and heads up. He's losing his marriage. Ooh, maybe he's it was planned. Currently separated. Yeah. Yikes. Big yikes. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel for Brittany. But at the same time, I'm like, you're married to Jax. I don't know what you expected. Right. And then we have Janet, who's inviting everybody to her hibachi party, except for Kristen. Right. And she's calling everybody and she's telling everybody. Letting everybody know that Kristen isn't coming. <laughs> she's on purpose icing 
Kristen out as if Kristen isn't a cornerstone cast member. And Janet, who are you? I can't see you. I don't want to know you. You bring absolutely nothing except vitriol and venom. And you're going to ice out Kristen Doty. Okay. I know. And all the comments on I see on Instagram and everybody, everybody's coming for Janet. Everybody hates her. Everybody hates her. And they're like, they're like, who are you? Like, what authority do you have? This Mm -hmm. is your first season on a reality show. And you're going to sit there and act like you're the queen fucking be and you're gonna ice out Kristen and make everybody else hate her get fuck out of here I don't know who all of these nobodies think they are turning against Kristen at least Zach has like the integrity to show up and help her out and be an actual friend none of these other people are friends except for Danny and Nia yeah I know so wonderful (laughs) they're the only good people on this show Mm -hmm. it's so sad and then we have Kristen and Jasmine go into a wine bar right and Jasmine feels the need to tell Kristen that Janet's not going to be inviting her Mm -hmm. to this hibachi party. And she's like, I just thought you would know. And then I think they're talking about like the rumors between Jax and Brittany. Right. Jasmine brings it up and says, hey, I met with Jax. Jax said you told him that something was going on with Michelle in their marriage. And this is where we get Kristen saying, well, actually, it was Jax who told me that. And then we have a flashback to their brunch that they had a few weeks ago with Jax actually telling her about Michelle talking to other people, an actor or something like that. Yep. And she also, Kristen, also has texts from Jax saying, hey, don't tell anybody what I told you. I don't want to be out here wrecking marriages. She shows it to Jasmine. But Jasmine nonetheless thinks that Kristen is a liar. I know. She's nonetheless like not supporting her friend. I'm like, Jasmine, what are you doing on my television? I know. Who are you? Why do I care about you? And your opinion of Kristen? Right. And she was the one who said a few episodes ago that the only queen of gossip here is Janet. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, you're doing it too. Right. Are you Janet's little minion? Yes. I kind of wonder if she is. But I'm like, who told Jasmine that Michelle was an LGBTQ hater and a Republican mm. and maybe a racist. That was Janet. Yep. Saying it to Jasmine. Yep. Who told Zach? Who told Kristen? Yep. But then so, Kristen gets the fall for it. Jasmine is a big part of the problem. Yep. I don't really like her. I don't, I don't like I'm her. I'm kind of siding side eyeing her and her intentions with this whole wine bar thing. I'm like, mm, I don't like you. And it sounds like everybody's having conversations before production even picks up yeah. cameras and everybody has already clocked. Janet for being a shit stirrer yep. and a bad actor, but you want to side with her when the cameras are on. Like, make it make sense. I don't understand. Why don't you just call her out for the bitch that she is? Right. To her face. Mm-hmm. All of you. Like, that would be awesome. I think they're all scared because she's pregnant and because Zach Ooh, alludes to why? this later in the episode. He's like, she's using it as, as an excuse to be a vindictive fucking bitch. And I'm sorry, but pregnancy doesn't make you crazy like that. Right. It makes you crazy sometimes, but not like that. Right. Everybody's just kind of walking on eggshells and I don't understand why. Like, I think what power this. does she have? I think they're like, okay, what do we think the audience is thinking? Oh, they probably think Kristen is in the wrong. And so uh. I'm going to side over here with michelle and with Mm. Janet, i think they're trying to predict what the feedback is going to be or the backlash is going to be from us like just be yourself right just tell the truth right show us who you are that's way more entertaining 100 percent. and there it just shows how out of touch they are with like reality because we all see it with our own raccoon monocles Mm -hmm. like janet's a lying gossiping bitch and then we have her hibachi party yeah and Janet immediately talks about Kristen and brings up, yeah, I'm not going to invite her. I didn't want to invite her because she's dramatic and she gossips and she's a bitch. As you're being dramatic and gossiping and being a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Like, can you not see this in your... I guess not. No. Does I guess Jason not. see it though? Your husband? I think he's seeing it now and he's like, mm-hmm. fuck. Well, you know, the previews of them actually going to Big Bear for oh, the baby yeah, yeah. Moon, they have a big fight, Janet mm-hmm. and Jason. And I think it's going to be because... Jason pushes back against Janet and he's probably going to do it very gently. Yeah. He's not going to like call her out and be mean about it. But he's like, babe, you need to chill out. Like you're doing too much, causing too many problems. And that's going to be just enough for her to storm off and slam the door and Jason chases her. That's probably why, because he doesn't like it. No, 
I, I don't like it either. So, and he's like, last episode, he's like, we're way too fucking old for this. Like, why do we even care? So I would love to see that fight. And then we have Jesse and his short ass standing up and being like, yeah. I'm five, ten and a half. <laughs> I'm five, ten and a half. With my hair. Right. And he's like, um, did anybody notice that I removed Kristen from our group chat today? And I'm like, Janet's like, I did because I was checking Zillow <laughs> at the time and the notification came in that you had done that. And I love that. Oh, that is so cringe. I'm like, you guys are a bunch of 40 year olds and you're talking you're about so uninviting somebody or yeah. uninviting somebody and then removing them from a group chat. Like, oh my God, mm-hmm. puke. And then Brittany at some point gets sick and has to leave because she had a, a shot of sake and got sick. And Jax mm-hmm. is a fucking asshole to her. Yeah. Like, he's not sympathetic at all. He's just like, yeah, it's the drinking. Okay, bye. Glad you called an Uber. Yeah, like, he says it about three times. Like, yeah, it's the drink. Yeah, it's because you're drinking. Yeah, you drink too much. And here again, I have to posit that I think he's setting up a case for himself when he fights for custody of Cruz that Britney's a drunk. Yeah. And he was on Watch What Happens Live with Tom Sandoval. Oh, yeah. And he did it again. (gasps) I think somebody asked a question about it and um he about their marriage and he says something like well maybe that's why britney drinks so much <gasps> yeah. sandoval said that no jack, oh, jack said that jack <gasps> said that yeah oh my god yeah it feels like he's on a campaign to paint britney mm. by that brush but at the same time she's giving him ammunition because she's puking in the driveway she's yeah. taking tequila shots every time we see her pretty much she drink us something yeah, but I wonder if it's because she's married to Jax. Yeah. And he makes her feel then horrible. Leave. Like, don't yeah, be an right. alcoholic baby mama. Like, right. what? Yeah, have some dignity and just mm-hmm. leave. And then after she leaves, everybody starts playing a little questionnaire game with the drag queen. I can't remember. Sparkle? Yeah, right. I think it's drag your heart game. Mm-hmm. And this was kind of interesting because Sparkle is asking like all these crazy risque questions like, how long did the men last in bed? And all the couples have to answer and like, who do you want to have threesomes with? So what did you think about all the... Because I felt like some of it was kind of juicy. Some of it was juicy. I mean, the time spent in the act of lovemaking, those men need to do better. I was going to say, is that normal? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, as marriage goes on, you have sex less and less. In the beginning, like you're boning for hours. You're up all night boning and everything. Yeah. By the time you hit five years, it's like, you know, half an hour. I don't know. Maybe it's me, but... It's not 10 minutes. It's not even 15 minutes. Like oh, we're this. there for 30 minutes. We're having, we're having a good time. That's what I'm here. saying. But I do think there are marriages where the, it's very quick. We get in. We get it out. We got taller. We got to huh. go to soccer. I got to go to work. And it's, yeah, it's very, very quick. But wow. then you work to change that. That's what I'm saying. And to have a better sex life. It sounds like Danny is the only one who's making it to like 15 to 20 minutes <laughs> by his account. Yeah. Although I think Nia said five minutes. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Danny's like, what? <laughs> it's at least 15. But then freaking Michelle's like two minutes mm-hmm. and Jesse's like 22 seconds. Right. And I'm like, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Every shot she could take at her husband, Michelle took it. 100%. Put him down over yeah. and over again. Yeah. And he just took it. He did. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Maybe he's got a punishment fetish no i think he wants to save his marriage for some ungodly reason i think he's trying to do everything that he knows how to do to keep it together but it's just not going to work it's because it's not enough because he's not actually doing any work to save his marriage and then the threesome question was kind of interesting because Jax doesn't want to answer zach is like answering for britney and Jax and says britney would want to sleep or have a threesome with Jason and Jax would want to have a threesome with Janet and he's like I've been told this personally he's like so I don't know what's going on there Mm -hmm. and Janet and Jason just kind of laugh it off I'm like that's really weird that's kind of creepy yeah I thought Jax chose Jasmine though he did Jax himself but Zach answered first gotcha 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 yeah right that's what it was and then every of course Danny and Nia are the only ones that respect their marriage and they're like um no I wouldn't want to have a threesome with anybody Mm -hmm. just want to be with my man or mm-hmm. with my woman. So I don't know. I thought some of it was interesting, yep. but some, some of it was kind of dumb. Yeah. And then we have Kristen and Zach talking her t-shirt business yeah. relaunch. Yeah. They're going to, Kristen's going to relaunch her James May t-shirt company, which she launched when she was on Vanderpump Rules. Oh. And I think when she launched it, 
you know, several years ago, it was actually fairly successful. Oh. But as she talks in this episode of The Valley, she describes like spending her money in a bunch of different ways. She didn't really know how to be in business. Ooh. And so like probably good money after bad. And then, of course, she sold her house. She moved in with that turbo weirdo Alex. Yeah. And now she ain't got no money. But oh, we got cameras on me. So let me relaunch James May. So now her t-shirt company is up. And I went to her website a couple of days ago, and I think we've got one t-shirt, like $46. Stop. In this economy, honey, no, nobody's buying a t-shirt. No. For, well, maybe some people are. And I know on her Instagram, she keeps posting people ordering James oh May t-shirts. And I do wish success for her. Sure. Because I want her to have streams of income. But yeah. That's weird. But they're talking about like Janet's gossip and Kristen not being invited and blah, blah, blah. And I think Kristen's like, yeah, I'm not going to invite her then either to my relaunch. Which Zach says, like, you really ought to be the bigger person. Why? And well, because just for the copacetic of the group like to just try and keep it together they're probably going to decline your invitation but if you can be the bigger person and at least extend that olive branch maybe we can accelerate the healing in the group and i think he's coming from a really wise and good place mm. but you know the road to hell is paved <laughs> with good intentions because it's not going to get him anywhere yeah and in the moment Kristen seems to be considering it like yeah you're right i should do that but then as we learn she does not invite them because yeah. she's a petty ass hoe ass bitch like myself that would be me i too. wouldn't be inviting janet no that termagant <laughs> oh that's a good word thank you thank what does you. that mean okay she's a shrew oh a that's screamy, totally a sh- terrible totally a shrew. woman yeah oh my god yeah no i would be petty as fuck if i was Kristen, i'd be like no fuck her if she's not gonna invite me to my thing to mm-hmm. her thing then i'm not gonna invite her to any of my shit and that pisses janet off later she can't believe it <gasps> oh but so good. i'm not i didn't invite you of course to my hibachi party but you're not going to invite me to your How james dare. may relaunch like what yeah i can't believe that she nobody wants mad. to be around you janet no. nobody actually likes you in this group no you're lame Mia as fuck. and danny don't even like you nope because when you call them about your dumb baby moon but yeah i'm really just feeling conflicted about Kristen, and so i think i'm just gonna keep them off the guest <sighs> list you see nia rolling her eyes you see danny rolling his mm-hmm. eyes you see even jack's rolling his eyes this yep. is stupid even jack is calling it stupid he thinks this whole thing is dumb as fuck childish yes for jacks to say that then yeah you know you're in the wrong well he can see everyone else's problems but his own but his own for sure um and then we have jesse and michelle discussing his spiritual retreat because he's ayahuasca yeah he's gonna go do ayahuasca for a day and he's like this is a hail mary for my marriage i'm really gonna (laughs) go there to like work on myself i'm like really dude to do ayahuasca you think that's gonna solve everything and he's he asks michelle like what do you hope happens after this and she's like well i hope you change your personality I hope another person comes home. <laughs> I hope it's a totally different man. I hope it's Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> In fact, I know which man I would like to, to walk through those doors. It ain't you, Jesse no. Lally. No. Yeah, it's such um, an interesting thing because I think he feels like he's doing something substantial for their right. marriage. And that's how vapid he is. Yes. That's how vapid they all are. Yes. Let me just go for 24 hours, take some drugs, try to strip down my ego and have ego death and have this dumb drug experience and come back. And then you'll believe that I really want to be in this relationship with you versus let me take myself to individual counseling. Right. Let me start meditating. Let me start practicing mindfulness and gratitude, like all the things you could be doing. But no, let me just take 24 hours uh before i go to capri (laughs) take some drugs and see if that works yeah and hopefully my ego will be killed by then i'm like no it won't (laughs) note to self yeah it's not going to happen no dude you don't even know what a psychedelic experience can even do or offer for you well i mean i hope he poops his pants (laughs) i hope he fucking wears a diaper and poops (laughs) his pants like the little man that he is poopy and the (laughs) diapy Oh, I don't like him so much. Oh, my God. He's probably going to have a crazy trip. I hope he talks about it next episode. I would love to know. I'm sure. All he does is talk about himself. Oh, constantly. He's so insufferable. And then we have Brittany and Jasmine driving to Nia's self-defense class that she's hosting for all the girls. And Brittany is acting like she ain't got nothing to do with any of the gossip. Right. Like, bitch, what you saying? Because I believe... 
Kristen, when Kristen says that it was Brittany who told Jax that Michelle is having some kind of an emotional affair or actual physical affair with whoever it is, an actor or whatever, I believe that 100%. And Brittany is now getting the smoke and she's like, it wasn't me. I don't talk about my friends. I really resent people putting me in the conversation. Well, Brittany, you deserve to be in the conversation. Yeah. Because you absolutely are gossiping about your friend's marriage to other people. Because when you tell Jax, you tell everybody. Yeah. And you know this after how many years together. Right. So miss me with that, yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. It'd be one thing if your husband was actually like a man of quality, a man of integrity, mm -hmm. a man that you could trust with this kind of stuff. Because I mean, I gossip to my wife of all the time. Of course, we all do. Yes. I'm always telling her all the the juicy shit but i know she ain't gonna be blabbing mm -hmm. her big mm -hmm. mouth to anybody yuck yuck <laughs> i'd be so fucking pissed I'd be like why'd you say that to so and so it was between you and me but Brittany's dumb she is dumb i also don't think she's a good person really yeah i think she is a little bit like tom schwartz in that way like she mm. puts on this appearance and she gives this projection of being a down-home person a country person with country values but like she's actually a very mean person mm. and she should really be sticking up for Kristen in this moment because she knows that Kristen although she's doing a bad job of it yep. Kristen is telling the truth according to Kristen but she's siding with the mean girls here and in fact she's the mean girl yeah 100% she's the mean girl at the whole self-defense thing she kind of comes for uh -huh. Kristen and I'm like wow slow your roll why is everybody ganging up on Kristen it's a on dog this pile it's, it's really, really unattractive for all of you to be doing this yes and everybody can see it for what it is mm -hmm. like there's so many comments all over the internet that are like look I don't really like Kristen but she doesn't deserve all of this mm -mm. like she's a dummy she's got a big fat mouth but she doesn't deserve this shit right when everybody's a bunch of pieces like everybody's gossiping mm -hmm. everybody's shitty except nia because she can't take exactly. it because she yeah. starts crying she's I like know. this energy is so fucking poisonous exactly. please don't please don't talk about it because i can't take it because you guys are tripping i know her doing this whole self-defense thing i'm like you are a woman who's so great like you've mm -hmm. got your fucking black belt and you've been in martial arts for 15 years get off this show like you don't, we don't need you on the TV. You and Danny are great, but uh, or like, in a different capacity. Yeah, like, I guess. Yeah, but, but I just this is these people are not on your level. No. Like if you're tearing out consciousness, and at the very top of the tears, you've got like enlightened, conscious people who care about other people. Like Nia's up here. Yeah. Everybody else is under the the ground. They're in hell. Subhuman ghouls. Except for Jason. Yeah, I like Jason a little bit. Me too. But I can't stand Brittany. And is it me? Is it like my own peculiarities? Like I can't take her voice. Oh, it's like either. so grating to me. It's yep. also like 10 decibels louder than everybody else. Yeah. And she's constantly cutting in. And if I'm Jax and I just want to come home, have a beer, hang out with my kid. And she's Ugh. over there in the kitchen on the phone with her fucking mom 24-7. I mean, I would... I, I, I couldn't go on. I would go limp. Like I, yeah, I would not be able to have sex with that woman. No. It's not your body. No. It's your big fat mouth. Yep. Shut up. And your personality. You suck. And Zach is from Kentucky. Is he really? Brittany and Zach were best friends in Kentucky. So how does Brittany have this thick accent and Zach speaks like everybody else? Especially after all of our years in LA. I'm like, what? Because it's a gimmick. Ugh, because I it's hate a performance. It. I so that we it. won't see through her. There's there's a lot of lore that you don't know about. Really? Brit Billy. <laughs> because, Brit Billy? Well, Hillbilly, Brit Billy. Like, there's a lot of lore. Like, when they were getting married in Kentucky, they had a show called Jackson Brittany Take Kentucky. Yeah. And they had hired an efficient to conduct the wedding who had, like, anti-LGBT sermons, rhetorics out in public what? that was fairly well known and when they were confronted about it and i think it was sandoval and ariana who confronted them about their bullshit minister being basically a homophobe mm -hmm. they got really mad and they yelled at sandoval they got really fucking defensive britney was right there yelling at Sandoval. And then they ultimately got rid of the pastor because the backlash was so fierce and so quick from everybody else. Then wow. they got some LGBT, some the dude from NSYNC, who's the gay guy. Oh. Lance or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so he officiated their wedding. But like there have been reunions when Britney has been really foul, sticking up for Jax, even though 
Jax is a terrible person, repping him hard. Wow. She's just, ugh, I don't like her. Wow. Well, then it sounds like her and Jax were evenly matched then. It sounds yeah. like they're both pretty terrible people. Trash cans. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, yeah, just so you know. Maybe I need to go watch that because that Brittany and Jax take on Kentucky or whatever is on my For You page on Peacock every time I pull it up. As if I've been watching it, but I haven't been. But it's always there. It's like, watch now. I'm trying to remember whether they featured that homophobe storyline on Brittany and Jax take Kentucky or whether it was part of VPR because they were both on VPR at the uh, same time. So I'm not really remembering where it happened, but it happened. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, that was another thing when they were doing their drag uh, heart game or whatever. They were talking about if anybody's had public sex and... Jack said him and Brittany fucked in the middle of Times Square like all the time like they would do public sex acts all the time I'm like that's interesting and now he's like now we don't fuck at all anymore. <laughs> I'm like oh my god and Danny and Nia had had public sex the night before the night before on a rooftop somewhere I mean hey have fun that's go, kinky go, okay, get uh. it well have you ever done that well I don't want to know okay <laughs> Because I will tell you. I know. You probably have. Huh? I have not. No? You haven't done any public? No. Wow. Mm -mm. You're goody goody. I mean, I've had outdoor sex. What do you mean? Like outside? Like outside. Like on your backyard? Yeah. In the in the water, at a beach, oh, on a beach. Wow. At oh. night. With the sand and everything in your crack? Yep. Your coochie in crack? the forest. <laughs> like, you know. Dang. Yeah. I mean, I've done shit like that. I grew yeah. up on an island, honey. Like, well, we that's had cool. to figure out how to do that. Yeah. But yeah, but I've never done something like at a park with other people around. Yeah. Like in a theater. Oh. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> Maybe a theater. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. Wow. That's so crazy. <laughs> I just had to bring that up because I thought it was gross that him and Brittany fucked in the middle of Times Square. That's like crazy. How? Like, how, literally, where? Like in an alley? Dirty. I know. It's grody. <laughs> so nasty. And then we have Zach and Kristen preparing for her t shirt relaunch mm -hmm. party. And this is where Kristen's like, Yeah, I've decided I'm not going to invite Janet or Michelle. <laughs> right. And Zach looks so disappointed. He's like, Oh. This is going to be bad. Right. And he's kind of taking over the event because he's setting up the racks. And yeah. And he's doing all the work. And Kristen's like, well, I got to go get dressed. I got to go. <sighs> so he's taking care of everything, showing mm -hmm. himself to be a really good friend and also redeeming himself in my eyes. Because earlier in the season, I'm like, you're a piece of shit. Why yeah. aren't you standing up for your friend Kristen? Yeah. But he is actually showing up for Kristen, which I think is great. Me too. I like that. And then we flash to a scene with Jax and Brittany at their house. And they're talking about the whole Big Bear trip and how Janet's not inviting Michelle or Zach. Or not Michelle. She's not inviting Kristen, Kristen and Zach. Mm -hmm. And Brittany's trying to talk to Jax about it. And then he pulls up his phone and starts scrolling on Instagram or whatever. And she fucking yanks his yeah. phone out of her hand, out of his I, hand. Girl. I mean, first of all, you're talking horse shit about this situation again right and even Jax has his limit of womanly dumb gossip that he doesn't want to hear yeah and he's been talking about this over and over and over again and you're continuing to talk about it and you're trying to make a scene she's trying to produce herself as well and he's not giving her any attention yep the fact that she gra if i tried that with my husband oh my i mean my husband would be so fucking offended he would he'd, he'd just get the fuck up and walk out and he yep. would not talk to me for quite some time it is a very disrespectful act to do yeah and then she immediately starts yelling at him i know like can you just get off your fucking phone for 10 minutes can't you have a conversation with me for 10 minutes and she's yelling yeah she's always ye i'm yelling is it annoying to you <laughs> no but it's so annoying to me like call yeah just lower your voice you're so combative yeah you're so ready to fight all the time heads up men don't think that's sexy no. if you want your husband to dick you down stop fucking yelling and yuck yucking <laughs> fucking hayseed seriously and he gets escalated because of it because of her energy and then she kind of just like blames it on him like mm -hmm. oh he's always treating me horribly which i mean is true uh, we've we've heard how he puts her down for her appearance and stuff so, like two things can be true at once yes Brittany, you can also be a bit of a bitch to him and i get it like he's an asshole and stuff but again this is the man that you married right he doesn't give a shit about you obviously he's on fucking instagram he's like i don't want to hear about this shit i don't want to hear about Kristen again i don't care he even tells her that he's like i literally don't give a shit mm -hmm. and i don't either right and then we have the t-shirt event which is kind of like whatever the only thing that's interesting about this is um zach and Brittany talking about 
Big Bear and then Jax like makes an announcement about how Janet's not inviting Kristen to it, but also not Zach mm-hmm. and Zach cries. Yeah, so he's sitting down with Brittany first, and Brittany is the one to tell him that, yeah, Janet's going to do a baby boon, and it's going to be in Big Bear. Yeah. And um, I think it's just for couples, and because you're not part of a couple, I don't think she's inviting you, and I hate to be the one to tell you, but Zach clocks it immediately for exactly what it is. It's not about him not being part of a couple, because he can go with Jasmine, it would be just fine, or be the third wheel with Jasmine and Melissa. Yeah. It is about him being right where he is right now, which is at Kristen Doty's James May party and supporting her and showing up for her. Yeah. And she's punishing him for that. And he knows it. Yep. He does. And I kind of felt bad for him. I did too. He he's cried. Like, yeah. He's like, what the fuck did I do? Like, I didn't do anything wrong. And I'm like, that's just Janet for you. And even Kristen and her talking heads, she's like, yeah, Janet's just an asshole. She's a bitch. So, I mean, it is what it is. Why did Jax feel the need then to gather the group around him and announce that? They weren't invited. I'm like, you really don't need to announce that. I mean, I think Kristen is going to deduce that on her own. Um, And Zach is pretty emotional about it. So we don't need to be announcing it to everybody. It was pretty tactless. Yeah, definitely. I think he just wanted to cause a scene and he Mm -hmm. just wanted to make it all drama. And everybody focus on Jax being the arbiter of bad news instead Mm -hmm. of Jax being the asshole and treating his wife like shit and calling her a drunk and all this stuff. Well, and immediately upon entering the party, he's just shitting on everything Kristen is trying to do. Like she's trying to relaunch her business because I think she probably needs the stream of income. She's trying to reestablish herself after being fired off of VPR. And for all intents and purposes, you seem to know what that's about because you were up on Watch What Happens Live on Tuesday night talking to Andy about like how so much stress in your life because you were fired from VPR and COVID and all of the things that Mm. happened all at once. And like, why can't you be there to actually support Kristen in this time? Like, it's a very telling of his character that he came in and he just started shitting on everything. Right. When like just a couple episodes ago, he was saying that Kristen's his sister and Mm -hmm. he would do anything for her and he he loves her very much. And I'm like, then you're just going along with this whole storyline of just throwing Kristen under the bus. She's the scapegoat for everybody else. He's creating drama. He's producing the show. Yeah. And he's deflecting, which is what Janet said last week when she's like, you know, flashbang over here. But meanwhile, my shit is totally falling apart over here. Yeah. And I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. But I think Jax does want to talk about it. And we see the preview Mm. in Big Bear, you know, from several episodes ago where Brittany's screaming at him from a doorway because he's actually telling everybody how he feels about Brittany. And then shortly after that, they separate. So I think he wants to actually let everybody know what's going on because Mm. he wants to divorce her ass. And he wants everybody on hers or on his side. Yes. Mm. And everybody who is interviewed, like on the after show or on Watch What Happens Live, when they are asked whether Jax and Brittany are going to get back together, does anybody think they're going to reconcile? Everybody's like, absolutely not. I mean, yeah. There's just no way. No way at all. After you leave that, I mean, like, bye. I hope she pulls an Ariana and finds somebody else in eight days. Do you think she will, though? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, she'd give me yikes. such a migraine, girl. I'd I be like, know. can I stuff a rag in your mouth? I know, for Which, real. A ball gag? Shut the fuck up. Go back I to can't. Kentucky. Yeah. For real. But yeah, that was the episode. It's kind of interesting, like, how Janet really thinks she's the queen bee. Mm-hmm. Really thinks she rules this friend group. It's really ridiculous to me. And I think so much of what we're picking up on as an audience is very intuitive. Mm -hmm. And it's also because we're veterans of a thousand psychic wars. Like we have been (laughs) watching so many reality television shows. Like we can sniff it out and you can put on a great performance. And I think nothing Janet has said overtly, nothing she has done has given us the impression that she's this villain, but we all feel it and know it because we got those monocles on. Yes, we and do. she's not getting away with it. And I nope. really would like to be a fly on the wall of her mind and what she's thinking about it. Because again, as we discussed, she is a consummate clout goblin. She moved from Ohio to LA to befriend Sheena Shea to be in an orbit around the VPR crew. And now she's on the Valley. This is her first season where she's actually going to be platformed and centered as a primary cast member. And she's fucking blowing it. Yeah. Everybody on Reddit's like, get her off my television. I don't want her back for season two. She brings nothing except 
bullshit. I honestly love it. I hope she's reading all the comments mm-hmm. and is like, oh my God, I fucked up. Because yeah, you really chose the wrong fucking path. Everybody could have rallied against fucking Jesse Lolly mm-hmm. and Michelle yeah. for being assholes. Total trash bag people. Like, like They are the ones that should be getting it. For real. Not Kristen. I mean, there's a lot we could say about Kristen. And yep. we should have been given an opportunity to really inspect her life so we could form some opinions. But because y'all are dogpiling on her yep. nonstop, we have no choice but to hate you. I know. And call your shit out. It's so crazy. And I really wish they would have a fucking reunion after this season. It would be so good mm-hmm. just to see Janet try and dig herself out of this hole that she created. But I bet if they have a season two, she's not going to be on it. Mm, I don't know. What she's do you guys so think? Do you think Janet's coming back? Well, she's such a firebrand like she's really a polarizing personality i think that she's the kind of person who can bring drama to a Mm. trashy show but at the same time she's so unlikable it's like watching cody brown yeah and robin brown it's like you are so unlikable i want to know what's happening but i hate to see you on my television screen for sure She's like that well then maybe they'll keep her on then we'll see oh my god it's season one you still have time to recast get some other people in here i think they should bring back jesse and Jessie Michelle. Lally. Yeah, I do. I think Ugh. they're the kind of trash that is enduring, mm. that can keep on serving. But Janet is so fucking fake and phony. At least yeah. Jesse is showing us exactly who he is. He's not lying about who he's who he is. That's he's true. yelling at his wife and his daughter. Yeah. He's telling you what he believes and what he wants. Yeah. Like he's very honest about what a dickhead he is. And Michelle, in her own way, is somewhat honest. A little bit. I mean, it'd be kind of interesting to see yes. who she's texting. And the evolution. Yeah. And people have rumored her to be talking to Quentin Tarantino, which is yes. pretty funny. I wonder. Well, he lives in Israel. Like, I don't think so. He lives mm, predominantly in Tel Aviv. Know. Unless so. she's got nice feet, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But um, it'll be interesting to see what... Ha- I want to just get to Big Bear already. Me too, yeah. I think we have what until 12 episodes this was the eighth episode yeah. so we have four nine, more episodes ten. okay so four more episodes it's going to be a little bit yeah until the finale we'll see what happens yeah i'm I'm invested man me too mm. and then after june no more vpr yep no more the valley no more seeking sister wife because i think that ends on june 2nd we're yeah. gonna go right back to sister wives rewinds yep and then we have decided have we decided well yeah i have to check the instagram poll okay. but we're Tossing the idea around of covering unexpected or something else. I know a few people have requested the current season of Love in Paradise because apparently that's very messy, mm-hmm. but it's already going on. So yeah. I don't know if we want to cover something. I don't really want to in jump past. in like midway on anything. Yeah, but it's still trashy nonetheless. But I think we're going with unexpected. Unexpected on TLC is what we're thinking. Yeah. But, but we let will let you know. know. Definitely. Yeah. And if you have any ideas, we're looking to like jump into something at the beginning of a season. So yeah. if you have any ideas, I was trying to check schedules, but it's really hard to tell. Yeah. So that is in development. Yeah. We will come back and announce that later. All right. Anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons will be addressed. Well, if you love our podcast, please go onto your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Five. It really helps us grow the pod and get more famous. So we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And we'll be back next week to talk Seeking Sister Wife. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.